Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman and in this lesson we're going to play Musette in D, which is a piece which we learned in a simplified version in an earlier lesson. Today we get to learn the original, more advanced version. You may recall that Musette in D comes from a famous collection of pieces called the Anna Magdalena Bach Notebook, which was a collection of pieces handwritten by the composer Johann Sebastian Bach in the early 1700s. He wrote these down for his wife Anna Magdalena as she was learning to play the piano. Or really, I should say as she was learning to play the clavichord or the harpsichord, which were the two most common keyboard instruments way back in J.S. Bach's time, a time period which in music we call the Baroque period. Back in the Baroque period, pianos had just barely been invented and did not become common until decades later. Let's have a listen to the original version of Musette in D. Here's the score for Musette in D. Now, we've been working together long enough that by now you know that I have a checklist that I use for every new piece I'm going to learn. It's, it's a list of things you should always check before you try playing a piece for your first time. Today I'm going to ask you to figure out these four things on your own and then we'll go over them together. So on your own, I'd like you to check the score for tempo indication, See what clefs we're using for the right hand and left hand parts. Check our key signature and see if you can figure out what key this piece is in. And then finally check our time signature. So pause the video and if you need to print out your own score, please do that now. You can download it from our website. Figure out those four things from our checklist and then press play to go on. What did you figure out for our tempo indication? It's marked allegro. Now, if you forget ever what some of these musical words, which are usually in Italian, if you forget what they mean, just look it up online in a music dictionary. Uh, allegro, you probably mean, you probably remember means fast. So we know right off the bat, this piece is going to be played fast. Our clefs, treble and bass, no problem. What did you figure out for the key of this piece? We have two sharps, which could mean D major or B minor. If you forget that, you can just use your ladder of fifths, which we went over in a previous lesson, to know what key we could be in. And then when you look at the key signature combined with the first two notes the left hand is playing and con continues to play, followed by these five notes of the D major pentascale, that tells us that this song will be in D major. By the way, you can also check the last note of the piece as well and see that we end on a D. So we figured out that we're in D major and then last on the checklist was to see that we're in 2-4 time signature, which tells us that there will be two quarter note beats in every measure. That is the checklist I want you to do every time you see a new piece. Tempo indication, clefs, key signature, time signature. Now let's take a look at the rhythm of the right hand part which we're going to learn first today. You see we've got a quarter note, four sixteenth notes, 
which we can, if in rhythm words, we say ticky ticky for those. Now scanning ahead, it's been a while since we've seen this rhythm. Here we have two sixteenth notes beamed with a single eighth note. And remember for that, in rhythm words, we can say ticky t. So this rhythm would be ticky t, 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 t. Try saying that with me. Go. Ticky t, 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 t. Now let's say the rhythm of the right hand part measures one through four. Uh, just speak it, and if you like to tap along with me, you can. Go. Ta, ticky, ticky, ta, ticky, 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 t, 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 t. Good. Now, can you say the rhythm words for line two on your own? Say the rhythm words by yourself and tap it. Go. Ta. Good. And then the repeat sign takes us back to where? Point to where this would take us. Well, we don't see any forward facing repeat signs, so that takes us all the way back to the beginning, and we do it again. Ta ticky ticky ta ticky 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 ti 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 ti. Try this line with me. Go. Ta ticky ticky ta ticky ticky ti ti. <laughs> Mess that one up. <laughs> we gotta try it again for Mr. Hoffman. Here, let's go back to measure five and try that one again. Wow. Okay. Ready. Go. Ta ticky ticky ta ticky 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 ti 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 ta. Mr. Hoffman makes mistakes too, right, people? Okay, very good. Now, let's come to the piano and we'll learn to play it. Check out the first note the right hand plays, and can you tell me its name? If you said A, you're correct. It's this high A, a skip above our flag F. Here's my middle C. On your own piano, place your finger five on your A. Remember that we have an F sharp, so you might want to go ahead and let your fingers fall comfortably into this D major pentascale. Now, on your own, can you figure out measures one and two? Don't forget the rhythm. Ta, ticky, ticky, ta, ticky, ticky. Now, you try to play those first two measures on your own. Go. You'll notice it's just a pattern of stepping down notes. So we have ta, ticky, ticky, ta, ticky, ticky. Now, you try one more time. Go. Good. Pause the video if you need extra time to practice that. But if you felt good about it, let's go on to measures three. Now, tell me the first note, the name of the first note you see in measure three. If you said F, you're correct. Because of our key signature, it will be F sharp. But you'll notice it's moved down on the staff. I have a finger three on this F sharp, but that is the top line of treble staff. This F is down near middle C. So we're going to have to quickly shift our left, our, our right hand, I know my hands, my, our right hand down here for finger three on this F for ticky t t t t t t t Okay, now, in measures three and four, I'd like you to pause the video and work on this section. But please note and try to learn from the beginning where you see slurs, which will connect the notes in, in a legato style. Notice that slur ends with the staccato. Staccato, staccato, slur, staccato, staccato, staccato. Try to train that from the beginning so you don't have to add that later on. Okay, pause the video and work on those two measures, then press play to go on. Now let's put that all together. We have ta, ticky, ticky, ta, ticky, 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 ticky. Now, you notice, as I finish measure two, I have to be thinking in my imagination. I'm imagining where my hand needs to go. So as soon as I'm done with measure two, I almost feel like my hand's just teleporting to here. Part of playing more advanced pieces is having a really good imagination. In your mind, 
I have to imagine where I want my hand to go, otherwise it's going to take me too long to find it. I have to get there in an instant, which means I have to be prepared in my mind for exactly where my hand's going to shift. In fact, try this with me now. Place your hand here on your piano. Now imagine your right hand being down here without actually moving it there. Imagine it being there. See if you can feel your hand already there. And then see how quickly, but without tension, you know, don't tense your muscles to make this happen. And see how quickly you can move without any effort. It's almost like your hand just teleports there. Don't make a big deal about it. Just let your hand whoop, almost like magic. Whoop. And then try putting it together. Ta, tiki, tiki, ta, tiki, tiki. See how my hand just teleported down? So there's no pause between measures two and three. Now, that may take you a while to get used to at first, but eventually you'll be able to smoothly connect those. So pause the video and work on measures one through four and work on this transition. Uh, try and make it as smooth as you can and then press play to go on. Now let's check out what the left hand is doing. Can you name the first note the left hand plays? We know the bottom line of bass clef is ground G, then it skips down a ledger line to E, and then we see we go a step further to low D. And then what's the second note? It's also a D. So we know we're doing octaves back and forth. If you learned the piece in a previous lesson called The Bear, you might remember doing this. These kind of octave jumps. This time we're going from D to D. Now it's important that you keep your hand relaxed as you do octaves. If an octave is a big stretch and you feel your hand getting tight, relax and just glide, kind of make a little rainbow back and forth. If you can reach an octave very comfortably, you still might want a little back and forth just to keep your hand really relaxed. You don't want it to get tight as we do this. Just let it feel like as easy as dribbling a basketball, if that's easy for you. <laughs> as easy as, you know, patting something. You know, you're just dropping back and forth on those notes. So try this with me. Maybe we'll slow it down a little bit. D to D with fingers five and one. Okay, you do that for two measures. And uh, don't worry about playing the right hand, but just so you get how it sounds together. We have ta, tiki, tiki, ta. That's measures one and two. Now look at measure three. What, what is the first note the left hand plays in measure three? If you said F, you're correct, which in this piece is F sharp because of our key signature. And you'll notice it's the F sharp up here near middle C. What do you notice about these notes that the left hand plays? They're the same notes the right hand plays. Both hands play the same melody one octave apart. Hey, that makes it pretty easy, right? Okay, pause the video and work on left hand alone. In measures one through four, then press play to go on. Now today, you probably won't feel ready to try it hands together, but when you do, just notice when the notes line up and when they don't. For example, in beat one, we play together, then the left hand plays alone, then we play together, right, together, right. Do you see how some notes line up and sometimes one hand is playing by itself? Together, left, together, right, together, right. Okay? And Thinking those words in your mind might help you as you're putting something together. Also, it can be helpful to think of the rhythms. The left hand is doing T, 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 but the right hand is ta, tiki, tiki. At first, you may go very slowly, ta, tiki, tiki, ta, tiki, tiki. Also note how the right hand should be legato 
while the left hand is staccato. At first, it won't feel easy to do, so go very slowly. Then both hands teleport towards the middle of the piano for this part. If you would like to try some hands together, you can pause to do that. But again, most of you will probably want to just do hands alone at first and tackle the hands together after a couple of days. Now, will you take a look at measures five through eight and tell me what is the same and what is different when compared to measures one through four? Take a minute and compare and contrast. What did you find? You might have noticed, oh, these notes are the same. And they are up till here. And don't ever fall into the trap of assuming don't assume that if something starts to look the same that everything's going to be the same. You have to check every note. And if so, you'll notice, did you catch that there was one little part, one beat here that's different instead of T, T. This time we go T, T, Ta. So let's try measures five through eight now on the piano. So to play measures five through eight, we're gonna start back up here. Notice how that gives a nice final sound to this A section. To go re, so, do. Now, pause the video and on your own, work on the right hand alone for measures five through eight. Then press play to go on. Left hand is same idea. Two, one, and two, and ticky, ticky. Now pause the video to work on the left hand measures five through eight. Once again, you may not be ready to try hands together today, but when you are ready, go ahead. At first, maybe you're going super slow motion. As you're practicing, I encourage you to keep your fingers close to the keys. Even when you do staccatos, don't go and peck at the keys and go flying off the keys. That's going to get you out of position. It's possible to get a really good staccato and still stay very close to the keys. If you just keep your wrist flexible and your fingers in a good position, you can get a really nice crisp staccato sound. And watch for those slurs. Those should be legato. Try not to hammer the staccatos. Remember, a staccato is not an accent. They should be played light and with a flexible wrist. When you feel like you're starting to get the hang of it, it would be a good idea to add in some metronome. I recommend at first having the metronome represent the eighth note, not the quarter note. So this would be one and two and. That's at about 100. You might start even slower, like at around 84 or 88, and then gradually increase that speed a little at a time once you can play it confidently, no pauses, no missed notes. Take your time to learn it right. Learn it with the legatos and the staccatos. If you polish all those details at a slow speed, it'll be so much faster as you increase the speed. Excellent work today, learning the A section of Musette in D. Thanks for watching and learning with me and happy practicing. Hey chef, yes. What's Johann Sebastian Bach's favorite movie? I don't know. What? It's Bach to the Future. <laughs> 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 A good one. Hey.
Scuba. Yes, I know another one of Bach's favorite movies. Really? What is it? The Empire Strikes Bach. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I bet Bach loved that one. Yep. Bum, 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 bum,